Hello, everyone. Welcome to Your Greatest Legacy, the Entrepreneur's Guide to Raising Confident, Self-Reliant Children in an Entitled World. I'm Alicia St. Germain, and today is actually a really cool interview with my friend, Kira Golden. Um, she actually is an entrepreneur living the life of, of having a business and children. And so I've asked her to be here today just to give you some inspiration and insight and, and just her, her favorite tips on parenting so that you realize that people are out there doing it and you're not alone. And, and so Kira, I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kara is the founder of Direct Well, uh, Direct Source Wealth, and um, Kara, I'm going to let you. Or I'm going to let you tell um, everyone a little bit more about what you do. Sure. Um, Direct Source Wealth was really born out of me hitting my own goals and my own objectives in life, and then taking a little bit of time and, quite frankly, going through crisis of like, okay, what's my purpose? And um, so it's a purpose-driven company. It's really about um, taking on what's broken in our financial service system and giving investors the opportunity to be um, still passive. There's a lot of people who want to be in real estate that don't necessarily want to be swinging hammers or taking classes and all of that, um, and yet can, can earn yields, quite frankly, I think equal or comparable to what particularly any new time, you know, first time investor may earn for their first 10 years of doing it themselves. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to level the industry, make, make uh, investors, I call them first generation made good people who they have to be accredited. They have it's just SEC regulations. All of this requires that we work with that level. But um, a lot of people's net worth is between, you know, million dollars to maybe 5 million. Um, they're too small to be, really getting the right attention from the large trusts and family office companies. And they're too big to really just want to put their money in a mutual fund and ride it out. And um, so we, we help those people. So you're bridging that gap so people can continue yeah. to have that freedom in their life and that passive income and, and all the things that we as entrepreneurs love, which is building an income around our life instead of going to work for, yes. uh, and then trying to live our life in the little snippets of time that we have left. So I love that. Now you built your business before you actually had children, correct? Huh. You know, that's interesting. I had been doing my business before I had children. Um, my son, so a lot of people say, you know, they, and I was like this, I want to get to a certain income. I want to be stable. Then I'll have kids. Then da, 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 da. Well, I had my son. And he forced me to really look at how I was doing things and made me so much better. Um, so prior to my son being born, I was consulting. I was doing individual real estate investing. I was probably working 90 hours a week. I was working constantly. I was stressed out constantly. And I was a control freak doing everything. And so when my son was born, you know, you're holding this little baby and I look at him and I go, I've got to rethink how I'm doing this. And so we went from being me doing real estate to a company um, really because of my son. I, I founded the company actually, ironically, one year ago, literally to the day of his birthday. So April 30th, 2014, and he was born April 30th, 2015. Um, but it really became a business. I started to trust and delegate and hire and expand and grow beyond my own capacity because of my son. And I think that's what our children do. They, they expand our capacity and who we can be in the world beyond what we thought we could be before. And Absolutely. I literally just had this conversation with my husband yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I was saying like, we were saying, what would life be like without our children? And I said, I don't know if I would be as productive because yeah. I've done more in my life, in my business, yes. since having children than I ever did before that. Yep. So, absolutely. And, well, and you really... I was having this conversation with a, a business colleague the other day who has a two-year-old uh, two daughter, and he said, I don't take a meeting. The threshold is, if I take a meeting with you, it's got to be contributing to my life in such a way that it'll help my family enough that it's worth not spending that time with my daughter. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I'm just going to hang out with my daughter, right? And it's the same way with my son. It's like, I'm just going to hang out with my kids, and if I'm going to take a meeting, if I'm going to do something, it has to make enough of a contribution to, to warrant that trade-off. And that's, that's a hard bar to, to cross. That's a hard hurdle to overcome. It makes well, us feel, more productive. I feel, I feel privileged then to have <laughs> you 
were, we were, we were um, worth that for you. So that's awesome. Yeah. So let me ask you, um, what is your version of life as a, a single mom? You're a single mom. Yes. So tell us what your version of life is and congratulations, you're seven months pregnant. So you have another one on the yep. way. So exciting. Yep. Um, yep. Another little baby boy. So I can't wait to see how much more productive I become after right. this. <laughs> um, but uh, my version of life. Um, so I, right now I'm sort of in this weird wormhole while I'm working through some things, but uh, you know, it's sort of a transitional period, but, um, but generally speaking, um, it kind of goes back to what we said before. It's like my day is prioritized around my boy, my soon to be my boys, and you know, making sure we hit play dates and we go to child events and work events, and and we're really fully integrated. So if I'm going to go to a conference, if I'm going to do something, I anticipate my kids are going to be with me. And so, you know, I'm looking at um, wh where can we be productive and where can we have the flexibility to. To, to play and to run around. So for example, like when I look at taking a speaking engagement, um, I will look up the children's museum in the area and the ratings. And if it's not a great children's museum, we probably won't take the speaking engagement. <laughs> um, you know, cause it's gotta work for all of us. Um, I mean, and just getting down to kind of nitty gritty daily, it's like I get up a little before my son. Um, I work for about an hour making sure any fires from yesterday are put out. Um, and then I'm with him until nap time. So one to three is sort of my next sort of working block. Um, assuming he gets a nap, he's just starting to transition out of that. Um, and I've resisted having a nanny or a support person. Um, by the time the second one comes, I'm going to have to figure something out. But um, so it's just been me and my son. And then, um, and then after he goes to bed, I have another couple hours. So probably four to five hours a day. Um, and, uh, and then also I try to schedule a play date for him once a week where he goes to the play date and I'm not going with him, both for his own development, but also that becomes another five hour chunk, four hour chunk of time that I can get some stuff done. Right. And, and I should mention, I think, I think it's worth mentioning how you don't just have like a company that's just you. Right. Yeah. We've got about 37 people now um, between employees and contractors and whatnot, um, multiple underwriters who source deals, multiple capital raisers. Um, I couldn't do it if it was just me. I couldn't take that. You know, I'm, I'm constantly grateful for the team around me that um, has either older kids or they're in a different place in life and they can put in the nine to five that when my sons are in school age, you know, I'll ramp back up to, but, but right now they, I, I'm really able to focus on the vision and the leadership, um, which I can work into those other hours. Yeah. So somewhere and my point in, in pointing that out is that somewhere in there, you know, as a parent, we choose kind of where we get our help. Like for me, mm. I do have a nanny that comes into my home and she's like, it's like, a, she's fantastic. And so she does do some stuff for me so that around the house and with the kids, just so that they have somebody else that they're interacting with instead of um, me always being on the computer or always doing something sure. uh, where I have to, to do that. But, but for you, I mean, I, I love that you've built a team around you even better. Um, you've built a team around you to support you so that you can with your son. I um I nannied in college for an absolutely wonderful family, but actually two families over that period of time. But one of the things that I observed, just again, a personal choice, I don't think there's one right way to structure it, but I would watch people hire people to spend time with their children and then they would go to the grocery store or go get their laundry done or whatever. So one of the other big things I've done and thank God for the world we live in right now is everything's contracted out. I mean, my grocery order is on autopilot. It gets delivered every Wednesday. I know exactly what's coming in. I mean, our menu doesn't get all that exciting, but <laughs> if we want exciting, we go out to eat. Um, cleaning services, like all of those things also really help um, to, to allow me to really bifurcate my time simply between sure. making an impact at work or making an impact with my kids. Right, right. Absolutely. So the, it's about getting those things off your plate that really you don't need to do. Yeah. yeah. I will caution people though, because at one point I got like hyper, hyper, hyper focused on that. And if it wasn't my kids or, or making money, I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then I started to feel like some other person was living my life. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't, I would just show up at things. I didn't know what events were. They were booking all my social engagement. They were booking everything. 
And, and I do think that it's important to keep a balance there and make sure that even if it's maybe not the thing that's going to, maybe it's not your top two priorities, you know, keep that list long enough that you have a well-rounded life that you're, <laughs> you know, that you're doing. Maybe, maybe a little time for mom to be like, okay. Yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like the first six months I, I was, you know, delegating everything and I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a balance. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So what, um, I always like to ask this question, what surprised you most about parenting? I was actually surprised how, this is not the right word, but how easily it all kind of came together. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, easily is not truly the right word, but there was just this natural flow. Um, you know, even just through the pregnancy process and the way our, our bodies are designed to work. And like, it, it, I was just so humbled by God's design that it's like, oh, we're, we are really made to do this. Like, and, and not, that's not always the case for, for everyone. They don't always have that experience, but I was really lucky that it, it just kind of, flow for you it was a good fit. yeah it was a good fit for you and were you um before you became a parent were you i mean every parent's like this like you're never really ready and you kind of you did mention that earlier you said like i was kind of forced to become ready <laughs> so you, yeah i mean you definitely did men mention that but um is that the is that the shift you saw like you were really not ready and then all of a sudden it's like you knew what to do or yeah i mean even emotionally like i mean i wasn't even sure I'd be able to have children. I had some, some medical situations when I was younger, whatever, like I wasn't, so I wasn't one of these people who was like, I am going to have kids, right? I'm going to have kids by this age. And I'm going to like, it, it was like, if, you know, if it works out great, if not, okay, you know, whatever. And, um, but man, it's like, then I like literally two weeks after my son was born, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Let's have another one. <laughs> you know, like it was just, it was a complete switch. Um, and, uh, you know, getting, getting ready for that. Uh, I, I did have, I had some friends, some older women who'd had kids a long time ago who really helped me also make sure that like I was ready. Right. I had, I didn't have the overkill of baby toys or whatever, but I had the things I needed in place when my son came to make life work and we have Amazon prime. Right. right. So like totally different world than when our mothers was, were having children. Like, if we didn't have something, we had it within two days and right. nothing was a catastrophe. So thank God for that. Right, right. <laughs> well, and, and um, you know, I, I, I'm, I know that as you're seven months pregnant, like, um, it's awesome that you're doing it again. And you, you know, you chose to do this on your own. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, so my son, I'm, 34 or 35. I actually, I was born in 83. So someone can do the math. Um, <laughs> but, uh, my, you know, my son will be turning three in April. His brother will be born April 20th. So 10 days apart or thereabout. So they'll be about, you know, almost exactly three years apart. Um, and that was getting to sort of the upper limit of the age gap that I felt like they would really feel connected to one another as, as close siblings growing up together. Um, and combined with my own age and whatnot, uh, it just, it seemed like the right timing. Mm -hmm. And I'd been dating, but quite frankly, like there was this chirping and pressure in the back of my mind that was skewing with my ability to really reason about who I was dating. <laughs> and sure. I thought, you know, let's just, I can afford to do it. I am emotionally capable of doing it. Why don't I just take that off the table? And, you know, I'll probably have two by myself. And if I find the right partner, I would certainly like to have more kids. But uh, I wanted at least my son to have a, a sibling, especially because he's from a home where his father and I aren't together. And, you know, I wanted him to have that anchoring. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. And I, and I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. And before we were talking about, and I just wanted to make sure that you shared this, because I think that sometimes people think they have to you have to have a mate and you even mentioned like it is definitely easier with a partner to to do this however um you'd rather have the right partner than well i was gonna say it's easier with the right partner i can guarantee yeah. you it's way harder with the wrong the partner. wrong partner and i think <laughs> a lot of people that totally understand what you're saying the wrong yes. partner is really hard so yeah, so it's like, I, and, and, and forget about even you as the parent. I mean, it's certainly more ideal for the child to have 
a mother and a father, or at least two parents. Um, but you know, I will say there was a lot of thought that went into this decision. And one of the things that I did was I looked at my my world and my community, and I have some incredible, incredible men in my life. Um, whether it's my family, my brother-in-laws, and my father, and whatnot, or my my work family, the men that either work with me or that I've done deals with and become friends with, but. Um, there's, there's no shortage of good role models. And I sat down with a couple of them and just said, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this on my own. Can I get a commitment from you that if, if my son or daughter needs a dad figure and something I can't do, can you be there for them? And so I actually think that this boy is going to be born with more men consciously focused on his well being than your typical little boy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you. So let me ask you this. What, um, what's the best advice you've ever received that you could impart on someone else? Well, okay. I actually say this on every podcast I do, even though most of them don't, aren't focused on children. Um, baby wise, my, my sister has five kids. Um, she got into the baby wise series, uh, which is about like sleep training through the night and then potty wise and all of that saved my life in the adjustment. If, like because you everyone says there's no manual for raising your children but there is and it's a really good one um and it's worked fairly consistently across the board with the women i know who've used it um so that's that was really great advice um the other next probably best piece of advice i got was not i don't think meant to be advice but i took it that way um i was doing one of my first larger real estate deals and kind of a cocky arrogant gray white old man said you know you're just a, a know-it-all neophyte you know he's trying to he's trying to cram some contract down my throat and i'm asking questions and um and you know and, and i ended up getting uh an interesting experience out of that deal <laughs> i'll put it that way um where, where i did trust people who'd been in the business a very long time to deal with me straightforward and honestly and and that wasn't necessarily what happened but what i what i learned from that is like a lot of people would have gone through that experience and been upset or discouraged or blamed the other third party and what i was able to do with some coaching and some meditation was really put that in context and say you know that's like initiation. You want to join a fraternity, you're going to get hazed. You want to do multi-million dollar deals, you're going to get screwed, <laughs> you know, but you do it and you learn from it and you learn how to structure and protect yourself and your team and your people better. And when you go with that approach, every deal is a learning opportunity. Every time we do something, we get better. Um, the the mistakes become smaller and less expensive each time. And, um, and, and, that just having that frame of mind, I think has really helped um, turn everything into a learning lesson and a piece of advice. Sure. Well, and I imagine, um, gosh, I mean, how many times do we sit there as a parent and go, well, okay, that will get me. I, I know I've said it. That'll get me the worst parent of the year award, or I'm sure oh, my children yeah. end up in therapy over this one. Cause yeah. we're, all just, we're really just doing the best that we can with the information sure. we have. And the whole point of this, this series is, as you said, there's no manual. They don't come with a manual. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, I think I had read everything when I had children and I was struggling with my daughter to sleep and we still struggle with it. So every kid is different. Yeah. Um, and some of them maybe have more straightforward ma manuals than other because my, my, right, right. my son is the one that they wrote those books after. He's like <laughs> perfect, like falls into to place. But you know, they're all unique and, and yes. fantastic um, in their own way. So, so it's really great that from that, you know, you take from your, your mindset that, you know what, everything is an opportunity for feedback and learning right. and not to be so hard on yourself, right? As parents, we can be so hard on ourselves. Um, okay. So what um, do you think is a unique challenge that entrepreneurs face when it comes to parenting? Um, outside opinion. Um, you know, a lot of people don't get it. Um, when you tell someone I'm a stay at home mom and a breadwinner and an entrepreneur, it's like, well, you can't be both. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, maybe you can't be both, but <laughs> I can. Um, and sometimes that the, the sharpest criticism comes from family or extended family who, who doesn't, doesn't get it. And, and, you know, they're coming from a place of wanting what's best for you, but they have a limited understanding of what's capable and possible in the world. 
Um, you know, and so learning how to, um, I can't remember where I got this from, but somebody just said, you know, when people say things that you have no intention of responding to, but you don't want to dismiss them or diminish them, you just say, thank you, I'll take it under advisement. Mm -hmm. And I use that phrase a lot. <laughs> um, and then, you know, go out and do, and you know, because really, if you follow other people's advice too much, you're going to end up living their life. And and if there's consequences, if it doesn't go the way you want, it's because you did somebody else's thing. At least if you have consequences for the life you chose to live, they're yours. Right. It's your choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. What you said about just saying thank you, because as parents, we do get a ton of unsolicited <laughs> advice from people who think they're being helpful. And that's one of the things I've learned to do more recently is, do you want my feedback or do you just want me to listen? Yes. Um, it's to ask people, do you want my feedback or do you just want me to listen? Yes. And, and I think that's really powerful in, in, in having someone else feel heard. Um, but also on the list, on the receiving side, just to say thank you. And then let us just say, you know, I know that their intentions were well placed. Right. They just don't live in my shoes. So how could they possibly know? And just to say thank you. It's not worth the fight. It's not worth the fight. And to be truly from gratitude about the fact that these are people trying to contribute to your life, right? It, it might not be a contribution you want, <laughs> but, but, you know, there's a lot of people in the world who don't have a network of people who even care to contribute to them and right. it's something to be grateful for. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love that. Thank you. Just say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on the business side of things, then you have your son, he's with you. Um, most of the time and a business emergency comes up and I know what we think are emergencies and what our actual emergencies are two different things. So how do you handle business emergencies when yes. you're supposed to be with your son? So this is another um, place where your children take you to the next level, right? Because you said it, sometimes what we think are emergencies are actually emergencies. And what I've really learned to do is give margin to things first, because it gives my staff an opportunity to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're still an early stage growing company. I'm still learning a lot about leadership and development and growth. And, and, but one thing I'm finding is that if I come in with the answer, then no one else is ever able to answer the question. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom actually pointed this out. I was complaining about how I'm the only one in the company who actually seems to be able to raise capital and I need to be able to run, steer the ship, not get on the phone. You know, I love talking to investors, but I just can't do that, just that. Um, and she said, well, you know, what is it about you that makes you feel better about yourself when you're the only one in your company that can raise capital? Ooh. And of course I'm like, nothing. Nothing. What are you talking about? I really am the only person who can do it. She goes, well, because I see a lot of people in the world raising capital. And I'm like, uh, right. It did take me like, like two or three weeks of like chewing on her terrible unsolicited advice, right. To finally come back around and go, yeah, I was in the way. Right. And so now when there's a fire, when there's a catastrophe, I have to let my staff fail. I have to let my team miss a funding deadline, miss a closing. And it's my brand. It's my name when they do that. Um, and figuring out that line, how far to let the fire really burn. Um, to me, it's really an inverse relationship to how much you want your team to be able to solve problems on their own. And then learning to get in there and coach and, and help people find their own solution. Um, and what's so cool about that is like our company does things that I never would have thought of. I never would have created certain things that we do in our business because they came out of someone else's idea about how to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, to tie that back into, I've got my son there with me. There's a fire, there's a catastrophe. Um, oftentimes it's as simple as sending an email saying, Hey, I'm here. If you need me, you've got this. I'm encouraging you. You can handle this. And you know, if you want some ideas, we can chat briefly right? But I'm at the park and <laughs> you're going to have to hear some noise in the background, but, um, but we can do this and, and, and I'll support you through it. And, and really in the end, it, it's all self building. It all, yeah. it all, it works better for my son. It works better for me. It works better for my team yeah. uh, for me to be involved at the, in that way. So there's so many things that I love about what you just shared. Number one, you're an adult child. 
<laughs> and you still got parented. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and around your business. So that right. actually is really cool. Yeah. Um, secondly, um, what you're doing with your team is not unlike what we would do for our kids. Is absolutely. Let them fail too and let them have some responsibility and stop when they fall and wait just a second and see how they pick themselves up. Or if they're older children, um, this is some of what we've talked about in some of the interviews with our parenting experts is, you know, letting them miss a deadline for homework and then yeah. being, you know, suffering the consequences. So it's really, there's a lot of things that are the same. You hit, I, to me, again, people on the outside can't understand this, but whether I'm reading a book about business development or child development, I'm learning for both in parallel. Um, and that's why I think you can pull off doing both because they're the same. <laughs> and if you can scale and support 50 or 100 people in having successful, meaningful, wonderful lives, mm -hmm. then theoretically you should be able to do that for your children as long as you keep your eye on the fact that that needs your attention and focus too. Because um, historically there were a lot of people who chose one or the other. Maybe the man went off and worked and he built this great phenomenal business and he was great in business and yet his kids felt you know, alone and isolated and unsupported, right? Or, and I don't mean to make that a man thing, but that's just the historical so division of labor. With one of the, with Aaron Schiller, our dad coach. Yeah. He talked about the same thing. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, but, but now it's like, you can take the lessons from one and reapply it to the other and vice versa. And, and everybody benefits from that. No, I, and I love it because, um, you know, when you're functioning at a higher level of leadership and you're really helping your child or your company develop your, and you're developing your people, um, in either, in either respect, you really get that confident self-reliant company or that confident self-reliant kid. Yes. And when you are an entrepreneur who feels like you have to do everything yourself and you're a control freak and you stifle your employees and you don't let them have any autonomy or you do that to your kids, you get people who are really dependent on you. So it's the same, it's really the same thing. Which to my mom's advice makes you feel really good and powerful and important, but doesn't really serve the people around you. But you're exhausted. It doesn't serve the And people. exhausted. And you're exhausted, so it's not really serving you either. Right, right. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, well, and your, your impact on the world becomes no bigger than what you can accomplish yourself. And, and oftentimes, you know, people who claim to be entrepreneurs, um, they really just own a job. Mm -hmm. you know, to, to really crest into being entrepreneurial. It's like there have to be other people who share your vision, who support what you're doing and who are actually becoming bigger and better versions of themselves because of what you, what you bring to the table. Absolutely. Which is why the series is your greatest legacy, because if we raise these confident self-reliant children who take their gifts, go out into the world and empower others as well, that um, it leaves a big mark on this world. So yeah, absolutely. Our companies that we can leave well beyond ourselves too. Yep. So very, very cool to pick your brain today and just offer inspiration to other parentpreneurs out there. Um, now, here's something that I thought was really interesting. We were talking before the interview. Um, you actually, your company actually has something sort of entrepreneurial that you're actually looking to expand and might actually fit some of our viewers. Yes. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So um, I often describe it. It's like our business has two levers. It's got the operational lever, which is finding deals, running deals. Um, so if there's people out there who are interested in real estate investing, but maybe either don't want to do it on their own or don't want to pay for a $50,000 class, they'd rather maybe do an internship with us or something like that. Um, we, we, we have a we only take people who we think we're going to make money off of. So we're not going to charge you to teach you to go do something and then never actually have you go do it. We don't, we don't charge you and we don't pay you, but we expect that we have to see something in you that we think we're going to make money. Therefore also you're going to make money. Right. Um, but also, and probably more importantly, the second lever, which is the relationship managers with the investors, um, going back to what my mom <laughs> said to me before. So we now have five um, people who, who manage relationships with investors, and we're looking to double that number um, quickly, as soon as possible, when we find the right candidates. Um, and so that's an opportunity where someone can be an entrepreneur. We, I mean, they have to be an entrepreneur. They have to be able they have to have that same spirit to be able to 
work from home, work independently, um, appreciate the flexibility, but also be willing to be on call, right? Which is sort of that trade off of what is it? I'd rather work 24 seven for myself than nine to five for someone else, right? Um, who want the ability to make it, you know, uncapped income and um, enjoy talking with investors about real estate. And so, you know, we're, we're interviewing people like that. Um, to expand our team. Um, so if, yeah, if there's people who want to be, and what, you know, one of the things I talk about is like, you have the autonomy, you're an entrepreneur. We have certain metrics and goals we help you sort of define, but um, you're in charge of making it happen for yourself and you have the support and resources to do it. So a lot of people who desire to be entrepreneurial, um, maybe either scared or maybe just life requirements, life burdens, make it impossible to take that risk completely on your own. And so we're, we're sort of um, maybe an incubator of sorts for that, that type of person. That's really, that's really, really cool because we actually talk about in other interviews about um, different ways to bring income in if you are, maybe you do have a job, you're somebody viewing this right now and you do have a job and you're thinking, you know what, I was attracted to this because I want to be an entrepreneur um, or I am an entrepreneur, but maybe I'm not doing it to the, to the way that I should, or I, you know, I could learn a lot more, do a lot more. And I also want to be home with my kids. And right. so we talk about in this other interview about how like, um, being a stay at home mom or stay at home parent is not the same as it was. It doesn't mean just cause you stay at home doesn't mean you don't bring income in because unfortunately, sure. or fortunately, I'm not sure it's good or bad either way. Um, a lot of households need two incomes or need, you know, a income. If you are somebody who is a single parent out there and you need a income, but you want the flexibility to stay home, sure. it doesn't have to be, um, it, it can look a lot of different ways. So what your company is offering is really a different way that entrepreneurship and flexibility can look. Mm -hmm. what I hear you saying. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. So how do people find you if they, yeah. Um, so in general, whether they're interested in being an investor or working with us in some capacity, they can go on our website. There's a lead form. I, I definitely recommend people opt in and just start getting our e-blasts, you know, get familiar with us in more detail. Um, and then specifically if you're interested in working with us, um, you can email Dave. So it's just Dave at direct source uh, and put in the subject line, you know, uh, relationship manager applicant send over a resume or a cover sheet or whatnot you know just something to kind of get you on our our pipeline and we can yeah we'll talk awesome awesome well thank you so much Kira for your time today um, it's been great picking your brain well thank you thanks it's such a great opportunity part of your project I absolutely love what you're working on oh thank you thank you so much and everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. If you miss any of these interviews, do make sure that you catch them during the replay period, and we'll see you again soon.